Raven, hello. Hi. Oh, first of all, congratulations. How are you feeling now that the news is public? Uh, I still, I don't think I got it. I still am in a bit of a haze, but I'm, I'm feeling good. A bit tired, but good. <laughs> well, the public is feeling very good. There was overwhelming positivity when you were announced. What's it like to hear all that love? Um, it means the world. I think um, having the public outside the borders of my country um, like my music, my aesthetic, I think that's like the biggest um, compliment that I could get. And when exactly did the broadcaster approach you for Eurovision 2024? Actually, I got the invitation to um, be a part of the the whole show. I didn't at that time. I didn't know that I'm going to be the one that will be chosen. That was, I think, like in maybe August, September. Um, but I got the call, I think, a week ago that I. So, yeah. So it, it's not that long ago. And I guess you didn't have to oh. think about it. It was an instant. Of yes. Course. Yes, of course. It was an instant. Yes. <laughs> no. One question we keep seeing on social media, who is Veronica? Veronica is actually, um, was a real person. She was the first woman to be tried as a witch in my country. Um, in the end, she was not accused of witchcraft, but they still drowned her. So I think that story is very tragic, but very poetic. Can you relate to that in any way? Do you feel a connection to her? Yes, of course. Um, I think women are still being prosecuted for being outspoken, for thinking differently. And they we don't have the they don't burn us at the stake, but they still kind of we're still kind of prosecuted, I think. Yeah. And the song is on your album, which is out in February. Did you yeah. write the song for the album or for the potential of EMA Eurovision? Actually, it was written I, it was the only song out of the four songs that I that were um, that I sent to the process of Eurovision, and this one was the only one that was not written specifically for Eurovision. But still, I remember when I was writing it, I kind of had this sensation that it would sound and look amazing also on Eurovision. So, but it was not written exactly for Eurovision. And what was the inspiration? Was it the story, or did you start with like lyrics or a sound? I think I kind of had this, it was like a vibe, this powerful, dramatic, but kind of feminine energy. And I wanted to, the sound, the, the sound of the song to be very, I don't know, kind of poetic, I think. But then the lyrics came after. Because you're very active in all of your songs. You're always credited as, you know, producing, writing, etc. Yeah. I guess, do you feel that when people hear this song, there'll be a special Raven DNA, like your soul is in it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm the author of all my songs. I mean, I, I collaborate with a lot of people, but I'm always the one that kind of brings the core core of the song to life. I think I, I always start with a demo that I do myself and then other people come in and join in the process. And for you, <clears throat> was Veronica easy to write? Did it come very quickly or was it more a long-term work like lots of months many months yeah it was not it was not an, an easy song to write it was not an instant song I mean I had the demo finished quite quite quickly but then even now I'm still working on it there's some work still to do um, for the Eurovision stage I think it's you still have to you have guidelines not but that I don't see as rules but kind of guidelines that help you um bring the message to the people easily. And I think I ha I still have some work to do on the song. Yeah. It's quite nice, actually. It's like a work in progress. You can keep yeah. evolving it as opposed to being stuck with something. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I actually love love to hear opinions of other people. I, I don't, I myself don't think that I'm the all knowing person that knows what's the best for this song. Um, so I... I kind of like to also take advice, not everyone's, but I think that it's nice that you know when to listen to other people too. We're really curious, of your three other EMA songs, which one is musically 
most similar to Veronica? Who is Veronica's cousin? I don't think, and uh, huh. I think it's maybe a mix between Zajarim and a very, very tiny bit of Kaos, but a very small amount. But I still, love... it's not that similar to any of the songs that I already had on Ema. I just love that bit where you're like, Kaos! <laughs> so good so memorable um yeah. some fans have asked you know three times even yeah. may always near the top you, you, the slovenia loves you clearly but at any point were you going to give up on the eurovision dream uh, i think i always knew that i'm going to one day stand on that stage i kind of had this feeling that it was something that was in store for me but I I didn't know when. I didn't think that it's going to be that quickly after the EMA 2019 with Chaos. I thought maybe like at least 10 years, but now it's five. So I think it's just at the right time. And looking back, if you could choose one of those three songs to go to Eurovision with, which one would it have been? I think it would be Chaos still. <laughs> I think I could make it work on that stage. And... One thing I love about you is you kind of make chaos work. This is a compliment. Like, for instance, visually, you do what you want. You got on some blue eyeshadow, some red, you blonde hair. It just works because you're a visual chameleon and the hair color changes a lot. Do you think that reflects sort of your mood at the time or like when you're writing a song and your hair is a specific color, is there a relationship? Yeah, I think... Uh the color of my hair definitely reflects how I'm feeling on the inside. I kind of, I'm not feeling the really bright neon colors anymore. I think I kind of, that's in the past. So now I'm fine with this blonde white hair. I feel like more feminine in it and more kind of not toned down, but just centered and yeah. Mm. And in terms of looks, I mean, because you're so involved in the creative process for your music, Will you be involved with the staging of your act for Malma? Do you have ideas? Yeah, of course. I had the ideas even when I was writing the song. When we started preparing the song for Eurovision, I already had this vision in my head. I know that there are some limitations to what we can do, but I really, I'm going to try everything to make it work and make it as as close to my to the vision in my head as possible. Mm -hmm. And one thing I just want to clarify, um, initially you had submitted the song for Ema, but then Ema was canceled. Was that because your song was just so incredible? It blew everything out the water? Well, I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think my song got a lot of votes. And I think that was the reason that they chose me. I think I, I think it was a clear decision for them. I hope it was a clear decision for them. And we noticed with Joker Out, for instance, the internal selection worked very well for Slovenia, got them to the final. Do you think that by you know not having Ima, maybe this helps with funding or I don't know, does it make the process easier for you? I think the prob the problem in my problem, yeah, kind of the thing in my country is there are not many stages where you can represent new music and for your songs to be heard. That's why a lot of people come to Ima just with the intention of, you know, not really going to Eurovision, but just representing their song. And then sometimes the winners that come out of the this type of competition is not really prepared for such a huge stage. So I think that the decision of having an internal selection is great. <laughs> yeah. And um, will we be seeing you at the London Eurovision party, Eurovision in concert? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I don't have anything confirmed yet, but I'm going to do my best to um, represent my song in as many countries as possible. And Jonathan, one of my colleagues at Weeby Blogs, he asks, what hair color can we expect at Eurovision? I think, well, that I can say. I think a bit more, a bit wider than this like grayish blonde white. I'm I'm working towards that color because it's a process for me. <laughs> yeah, it actually, it seems to have like a witch-like quality. Like for Veronica, maybe there's a relationship. Yeah, I don't want Veronica to seem scary or 
Because even like when they say witch hunts, you know, the women that were really tried at the witch hunts were not really witches. They were women that were accused of being witches. And I think they were very feminine. They were not scary. Um, and I think I want to also portray that on the stage. And we saw your beautiful press photos when the announcement was made that you're going to Eurovision. I sort of thought of the Little Mermaid and a Black Swan together. What yes. was the look you were going for there? I remember seeing the photos and I was like, this looks like Gollum from <laughs> Lord of the Rings, but like fashion. And I kind of love that. I like to mix the aesthetic of maybe something not necessarily ugly, but not socially acceptable as being beautiful, but m making it beautiful. I think that's I, I love that part the most. Yeah. And one thing about you we love is that you're a trained opera singer. You have this gift for operatic melodies, big notes. Will we be seeing any of that in Veronica? Um, I think there will be some parts of the song where I can show my operatic vocal as well, but it will be just elements. I won't sing the whole song with this operatic kind of voice. Do you think that when you're performing opera, as opposed to performing pop music, it's a, it somehow brings something different from within? Is there a different Raven energy? Yeah, for sure. I think I had um, I had some trouble in the beginning because I thought that I had to completely tone down this um, artistic persona that I have as a pop singer when I'm on stage as an opera singer. But now I kind of see that it's like everything comes from here. Everything comes from my voice. It's the same instrument. And I do believe that maybe some people are a bit taken aback at first when they see my tattoos or the color of my hair and when I sing opera but I think now they're getting used to it and as um when I'm accepting of myself then other people accept that too yeah, yeah that's a real diva that is a diva <laughs> And you had a concert last night if I'm not mistaken you're you're very very busy yeah, I had, it was not exactly a concert. It was a general rehearsal for the um, show that we have at uh, the National Opera Orpheus in the Underworld. Um, and yeah, it was a very busy day for me. Oh my goodness. Are you playing Eurydice? Are you the star? No, no that's a soprano. I'm uh, actually playing the role of public opinion. It's a very <laughs> interesting role. Um, yeah, it's a very, it's a kind of a, it's a funny show. It's like a satire almost. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a great show. I mean, public opinion, that's an interesting one because you are very much in the spotlight, you know, we've seen you at Ema for many years. Do you pay attention to public comment or do you just kind of focus on your art, your craft? Uh, I, I would lie if I wouldn't say that I'm very susceptible to other people's opinions. I just try now, I know that. And I just try to kind of isolate myself from situations when I would be too open to scrutiny or I just don't, I, I try to not read the comments. But I think what's the most interesting thing with this situation now is that I have so much support from outside of my country, but here, they're a bit more critical of all the artists that we send to Eurovision. So, yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because um, on the outside, we view you as queen. People are like, it's Raven's moment. You know, <laughs> this is Raven's time. And so, yeah, that's just really interesting. But hey, you know what? You rose to the top. The broadcaster chose you. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> and something that was really touching in your Eurovision announcement was the relationship with your mother and how the two of you have enjoyed Eurovision together. Could you tell us a little bit about your mother, you and Eurovision? Yeah, um, I think like my whole family, we always always watched Eurovision together since I was really, really little. Um, she didn't tell me that at the time, um, but later on, I think last week when I told her I'm going to Eurovision, she said, I knew that when we were watching Eurovision, when you were five years old, I was thinking, one day she's gonna be on that stage but now i'm sure that when she's gonna see that i when she's gonna hear that i said that out loud she's gonna be everyone will think that i'm this stage mom or something but she's really not she's very supportive and um she never pushed me into anything yeah 
not a stage bomb. She's <laughs> wrong. She's the witch. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enchantress. <laughs> and in terms of Eurovision, since you watched it for so long, people are going to ask you this all the way to May. Who are your favorite Eurovision acts? Uh, I love Aminata. Oh. Uh, yeah. I love Karia. I love Loreen. Hmm. I think these are my top three, but I'm sure that like 10 minutes after we finish, I'm going to have like a few other artists in mind. <laughs> what about from Slovenia? From Slovenia? I loved Zala and Gaspar. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think they were, I think they were great. Mm. They were very honest and very centered and I, I, I love them. Yeah, But also I love Joker Out. I mean, they were amazing too. So much charisma, just yeah. You can't stop watching. Yeah. Um, have any of these acts reached out to you to, I don't know, offer support or give advice? Yeah, Joker Out, like um, Boyan from Joker Out, we're really good friends. He always gives me advice and I'm very grateful that I that I can kind of learn from him as well. Um, but I think that's it. No one else. But I think I, I feel supported from by the artists that were there already. And is there anything about Slovenia as a country that you think people outside of Slovenia don't understand or rather that you would like them to know? Hmm. That's a hard question. I don't know the answer to that. I think I would have to think a bit more on that. But I, we're just a very small country. Have We have a very specific taste for music. Uh -huh. And I think that also reflects in the acts that we choose as our representatives. Well, you are broadening yeah. people's horizons. You're expanding mm -hmm. all of that. We are so proud of you and so happy because thank you so much. So many years coming. It's like I don't know that many Slovenian artists, but I know Raven. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very very good to hear. So, do you have a final message for all of your new fans across Europe, Europe, who are going to be following you in the months ahead? I hope that they will. Um, accept Ver Veronica as their as this kind of archetype for femininity and that they will understand her story and they will enjoy my performance. She is Raven. The song is Veronica and there's a new album out in February. Sirene? Siren? Yeah, Sirens. Yeah. Oh, we can't wait to hear <laughs> Raven, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great interview. Oh, you're amazing.